Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 12. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, then download the workbook, YouTubers Love Excel 9 to 12. Hey, number 12 here, the same person that would ask the question number 11 asked about average. She wanted to see how to do it with functions and with a pivot table. Now we'll look at a new function in 2007, then we'll see how we do it with functions in 2003, and then a pivot table. Hey, I'm going to scroll over here. Oh, there's my data. Got some uh, a proper Excel table format, field names at the top, records in rows. We got year sales, cost of Google, profit, and sales reps. And what we want is we want to calculate the average for every year of sales. So let's scroll over. We'll look at a, a new function in, in uh, well, actually, we'll look at Excel 2003 first. Equals sum if, open parentheses. Now, you have to do a sum if and then divide by a count if to do it in earlier versions. So I'm going to take the range, then the criteria for that range, which is years, and then the sum, which will be our sales. So I'm going to go over and get, scroll over. Get my years, click on the top, control shift down arrow. That's a great way to highlight the current range. And then F4 to lock the cells because we need it locked in all directions. We're going to use that sales range in every single direction, comma. Now, the criteria is right here. Now, this cell reference, as we copy average sales to the average cost of goods sold column and then average profit column, we need that H8 lock, but we don't want it locked when we copy it down to the next year and the next year and the next year. So we hit our F4 key once, twice, three times. The dollar sign in front of the letter means locked across the columns. No dollar sign in front of the number means not locked when we copy it down, which is what we want. Now we comma, and where's the sum? The actual range we want to uh, sum, in this case, this is just the numerator. We're going to do a count if to get our average. The, the range we want to sum here is the sales. So I'm going to click, click in the top cell, control shift down arrow, and then F4 to lock it. <gasps> but wait a second. Look at this. Sales. We want the sales locked when we copy it down, but when we move over to the cost of goods sold column, no way. We want that whole range right there. You see the dancing ants dancing around. We want that to move to there. And then when it gets to the profit column, to move to there. So we actually want our cell reference. If I hit my F4 key, lock going down, but not side to side. Then I close parentheses, and I want to do divide by count if, open parentheses. And this range is going to be the uh, years and the criteria. We only need years and criteria for count if. So I'm going to get the years. Click there, Control Shift down arrow, F4. And that one's going to be locked in all directions because we need in the denominator to count the years every time. Comma, the criteria will be right there. Not lock going down, lock side to side. So I hit F4, F4, F4. Close parentheses. And that's how you have to do it in 2003. Control Enter. And there we go. We have all of our averages. I click right there. I hit F. Two to put it in edit mode, and sure enough, it looks like we got the green one there correct. And if I scroll over, no way. Look at that. The blue one is still locked on the years, and the purple one is locked on profit. All right, I'm going to click Escape and go down here. Now, in 2007, there's a new function called Average If. Average if. This is not in earlier versions. We need the range, which is the year, the criteria for all those years, and the average range, which will be our sales, cost of goods sold, or profit. So I'm going to scroll over, click in years, control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it. Comma, I'm going to click right here. I want it locked going side to side, but not up and down. So I hit F4, F4, F4. If you are don't know how to use mixed cell reference or don't know what that means, uh, please go watch the Excel basics. You'll basically uh, get a promotion if you learn these. You can do things so much more quickly if you know all the types of cell references. And in, I have a bunch of videos on cell references, but the Excel basic series that I have available at YouTube uh, will help you greatly. Then I'm going to hit comma, and here's where it's going to help us greatly because we don't have to type this huge formula in three times. We're just going to get the sales and lock it going down, but not to the side. So I click over here. I get my sales, control shift down arrow, F4, F4, whoops, 
F4 twice, that means lock going down but not to the side. Close parentheses, Control Enter. I click in the last cell and hit F2, no way. Let's look. It's got the green one there. I scroll over. Look at that. I scroll over. It's got the purple one there and the blue one there. Now, in the long run, if you learn your all types of cell references, uh, you'll save so much time by the end of your career, you'll probably live a year or two longer. I'm going to click Escape, and now I've got to show you with a pivot table because that's always almost always the best answer. I'm going to click here. Sometimes you need to do it with the functions, whatever requirement, like you always want it to automatically update. You don't want to have to refresh like you do in pivot tables, so functions are good. Now watch this. I'm going to click somewhere in the data set. It's in proper Excel list table format. In 2003, I go to the data menu and then pivot tables, the keyboard shortcut that works in 2003, or it works in 2007, it will open up the old three step is Alt DP, Alt DP. Step one in 2003, you say it's in Excel and pivot table, click next, you tell it where you want your data, where the data is coming from. If you got it in proper Excel list table format, that always comes out right, click next. Where do you want it? New worksheet. I'm going to click Escape, and then I'm going to do it the new way. I'll insert Pivot Tables, Pivot Table. The new version has just one step. Uh, here is the range. You can tell it external data source if you want, and new worksheet. I'm going to click OK. Now, 2003, you always click on the field and drag it to, say, right here. You got years. In 2007, you click on years and drag it to the row labels area. Now, we want sales, cost of good, and profits, profits so we're going to click and drag down to value. In 2003, you have to click on cost of goods sold and very carefully drag it over here. Uh, profit, you click and click in 2007 and drag there. 2003, you'd have to drag it to here. Now, now it's arranged vertically, which is fine, but I'm going to right click on this data right here, right click, and say move values to the uh, columns, move value to columns. It doesn't matter if you do it um, e either way here, it's an arrangement element. Now we need to change each one of these sums to average, so I right click and point to value field settings. This is excellent to know for a pivot tables because there's the number format and there's the function. Click OK. Then I come over here, right click, field settings, click on average, click OK. Scroll over, right click, field settings, change the function, click OK. All right, so there you go. Those are three different ways. Pivot tables, much faster. All you got to do is if you change the data, right click, refresh. Uh, if you want to do it with uh, functions, then you can use either in 2003, uh, you can use your sum if and count if in 2007, just use average if. All right, see you next Excel trick.